podcast exists for the edification and benefit of the people of Noblesville Baptist Church, as well as our surrounding community. Our aim is to use this platform as an additional discipleship tool for the discussion of social, political, and theological topics in order to glorify God and grow in Christ-likeness. Hello and welcome to another episode of the NBC After Hours podcast. We are in episode 6 here in season 3. And if you remember, we left off the conversation with Larry Kerfoot. And he was just talking about how the Lord transformed him from a moral man into a Christ-honoring, faithful servant of the Lord. So, and that all began really with the death of his uncle. And so we are going to just basically pick up right where we left off. And uh, hopefully the rest of this conversation is a blessing to you. Uh, Enjoy. You you were burdened with this thought that that he was not prepared for death. Exactly. And uh, all of these type of things are swirling in your mind and heart. Okay, so what happens? Well, ab- after he passed away for about two and a half weeks, the Lord really dealt heavy. Uh, now, some people might think this is a little strange, but every day... For the next two and a half weeks, something would come up and happen in my life where I escaped death just barely. Seriously, wow. uh, I mean, you know, there'd be a car pull out in front, you okay. know, and this thought come to my mind: boy, if I'd have got killed, I'd went to hell. Wow. wow! I mean, for two and a half weeks. Wow! And uh, it it got to me to the point my wife was was worried about me. Hmm. She didn't say anything to me, but she said, "Boy." She was really worried that because I was so quiet. and She could tell something was going yeah. on. Something was bothering yeah. you. And uh, so uh, after about two and a half weeks, I, God had had me prepared. And uh, the year before that, one of my real close friends that uh, played music with me had gotten saved. Hmm. What was his name? Uh, Jimmy Smart. Oh, I've met Jimmy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he, so Jimmy gotten, became a Christian. Yeah, he became a Christian, and he dropped out of the band. He said, I can't play music in a bar on a Saturday night, you know, and go to church on Sunday morning. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, But he would come over to the house mm-hmm. every once in a while and tell me, he said, well, Larry, he said, I'm just just in a neighborhood. Of course, he lived 20 miles, but he's just in the neighborhood <laughs> that day. <laughs> he said, thought I'd stop and see you for, for a minute, you know, and he'd sit there for a minute, and he, he would, uh, he wasn't there over five or ten minutes, but. He would uh, invite me to church. Okay. Then he'd say, well, I've got to go. And he'd walk over there to the door and start crying. Look at me and said, I don't want you to go to hell. Oh. And he'd leave. I'd tell my wife, Margie, I'd say, boy, I really like that kid, but I wish he wouldn't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. But, But he did that two or three times. But after about... Two and a half weeks after my uncle passed away, and and the Lord had dealt with me, showing me my lost condition. That uh, happened to be a he happened to be out on visitation, and nobody was at home. And the preacher asked him if he knew of anybody he wanted to see, and he he asked his preacher to come over and see me. Huh. And uh, so th- Jimmy and his pastor, uh-huh. they come knocking on your door knocking one on night. My door. I had worked over four hours. And got home sometime between 7.30, quarter to 8, and I had just hung my coat up on the door when I heard that knock on the door. Okay. And uh, they come in, and his pastor started talking to me. And uh, that's the first time I ever really heard the the message of grace Mm. and how the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. Okay. So, so, I mean, it's been a number of years. Um. But we, when you say message of grace and you talk about the blood of Jesus, of course, that brings up all sorts of ideas to me, you know, being, being very familiar with this type of language. Mm-hmm. To the best of your ability, what did you hear that night that was so different? Because you've told us, you thought beforehand it was all about works. Mm-hmm. It was all about being a good man. And if you're good, outweighed your bad, then God would be pleased. So what did you hear that night? And, well, I know uh, the verse the pastor started out with was Isaiah one eighteen. 
though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow, and shall they be bewildered. Wow. And, and then he, he started explaining to me about how the blood of Christ would cover my, my, my sins and make it white, and he started giving me the grace. And, okay. But he, so, he, he started from that verse. So that, that pastor, he starts in Isaiah, and I'm, I'm thinking of that verse now from the King James. It says this, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Yes. And so there's this prophetic promise given in the book of Isaiah of God removing Israel's sin. And so that, that preacher starts there with you. Basically, he's confronting you with this fact. You have a sin problem. You're not as good as you think you are. But there is a solution to your problem. And the solution is God's son, Amen. Jesus. Amen. And he's explaining to you Jesus' life and Jesus' obedience and then Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and how the blood of Jesus is able to cleanse you yeah. of all your sin and make you white as snow, make you white like wool. And the imagery there we're talking about make you righteous before God. Do you remember anything else about what he said? Uh, he asked me if I was a sinner. Okay. What'd you say? I said, yes. I, I said, I know I'm not worth two cents. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah, I said, I'm, I'm a sinner. Hmm. And, uh, he asked me if, if I knew if I was going to heaven or hell. And I said, well, I said, if I die now, I'd go to hell. Wow. And he said, he brought up uh, Christ and his grace and again, his love for me. And, and then uh, he asked me if I would, you would uh, want to say the sinner's prayer. Wow. And accept Christ as my yeah. Savior. Yeah. Yeah. So pause there for a minute. Just for anyone that's listening, in case they're not super familiar, uh, we believe that the Bible teaches that there is good news. The good news is that God in his love has provided a way for men and women to be made right with God. All of us are sinners. We're sinners by birth. We're sinners by choice. We deserve God's judgment, God's wrath. Yet God in his love provided a way to be reconciled to himself. God sent his son. Jesus came, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, obeyed in all the ways that we ought to obey. He did not deserve to die, but he willingly offered himself up as a substitute. He took on our sin. He took our punishment. God punished Jesus so that God could then justly pardon those who would believe on Jesus. And so we have this good news as Christians that we have been given that the penalty for sin has been paid by God's son. He not only paid that penalty in his death, but that he then triumphantly rose from the dead. Amen. He rose from the dead, never to die again. He then triumphantly ascended to the father's right hand where he took his seat Amen. on a celestial throne and all authority and power has now been given to him. And the good news is Jesus will save anyone, anyone red, brown, yellow, black, white. They're all precious in his sight. Rich, poor, young, old, religious or irreligious. Jesus will save anyone who comes to him in simple faith. faith. And so as a person cries out to the Lord, we have wonderful scriptures like Romans 10, 13. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Or I'm thinking of Acts chapter 16 when the jailer says to Paul, what must I do to be saved? And the response is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And this is landing on you. And I'm sure that in this moment, you're 37 and you're having this eureka. Wow, you mean it's, it's not about my works, right? It's not about what I do. You're coming to the recognition that the only thing you do is sin. And, and salvation is about trusting in what Christ has done. 
Christ died. Christ worked. And, and you have a choice. Trust in your own works, which will fail you. Hmm. Or you can rest in Christ's work. You can be uh, placed under his divine protection. You can be united to him by faith. And when we talk about the sinner's prayer, um, that is a, a way of just referencing a person calling out to God so that he might save them from their sin because of what Christ has done. The, the sinner's prayer is uh, a simple prayer that expresses that. Mm -hmm. And so you were in your living room? I'm in my living room. And that pastor led you in a sinner's prayer? Yes. Amen. Okay, what happened then? Well, what happened then was uh, when they got ready to leave, and uh, I stood there at the door and watched that car pull away with my friend and his pastor, but I knew there was something stayed. Huh. There was something different. Hmm. I absolutely knew that. Huh. Wow. Okay, so describe... What type of change did that bring? Well, it's, it's kind of kind of interesting in, in, in a way how to describe that because I've always had been a person that always done basically what I wanted to do, you know. Okay. And uh, it was surprising me, like, people coming up to me and telling me that I was changed. I said, well, what do you mean I'm changed? You know, I'm still me. I'm still Larry. You know, I've always been Larry. Yeah. And I thought I was still me, you know. Yeah. But they, they had noticed a change that, hmm. I, I guess that's that being born again, how you describe that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been born again to where uh, the old things had no interest in them at all. I didn't want to do them. I wanted to do things pleasing to God. Mm. Yeah. Where I'd done things I wanted to do before, I'm still doing things that I want to do now. Okay. So describe some of the things that were very much a result of the new birth that you began to see in your life? I mean, did you start going to church? Did you start reading oh, your Bible? What, what, what happened? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, was, I got saved on a Thursday night, and I was in church Sunday morning. Wow. And, uh, and I didn't want to miss any. Huh. I wanted to learn, I wanted to learn more. Okay. And, uh, and absolutely. You were hungry. And uh, uh, that, uh, that pastor... Give me his Bible that night. Really? And I, I've still got it at home. I, I, I wore it completely out. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, you know, I, I had a desire to, uh, uh, to read the Word every morning before yeah. going to work. Always before, I'd read woodworking books and things like that, you know, with a cup of coffee. And why well, I don't even know what happened to them books, but wow. I, I, I was able to read my Bible. You just have an appetite just, just, for I God's just, Word? I was just so... Happy to uh, to to know that I, I wasn't yeah. going to hell, to know that, and I just had this peace yeah. and joy, and I wanted to know more about it. Yeah, there was well, so much I didn't know. I didn't feel like yeah. I knew anything, but I wanted to know. Well, and we can put our <clears throat> theological hat on. And Paul said to the church at Corinth, "If any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away; all things become new." And it can be hard if a person's not a Christian. They can listen to you, and they don't get it. You know, in their mind, maybe they're like. They're thinking you're driven by feelings of guilt. You're, you're driven by some weird intellectual interest. And uh, the Apostle Peter put it really well. He said this, as newborn babes, we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that we can grow thereby. And when a person has been converted, when you've been born again from above, just as a baby has a natural hunger mm -hmm. for its mother's milk, you, as a new babe in Christ, you have a hunger, and it leads you in new directions. I mean, that, that's why Christians find it so satisfying to go to church. Um, we know churches aren't perfect. Yeah. We know that they're filled with hypocrites. We're one, and we welcome you to come, too. We know all of this, but there's something that we get as we're fed God's Word, and it meets a desire of our soul that is deep and powerful, and... There's this new joy. You know, David talked yeah. about he desired God's word more than he desired his necessary bread. Yeah. And that sounds foreign to a lot of people. Yeah. But when you've been converted, it's so real and strong and true. And you're experiencing all of that. 
Yes. Uh, did you catch any flack? Well, uh, there was sometimes people thought I was overzealous. Okay. <laughs> you know, because... Larry got but, religion. <laughs> they said, that's good. I'm glad you do, you know, but, yeah. you know, you don't need to go pushing it right, off. Right, right. Yeah. But... Uh, Just as long I'd, as you keep your religion to yourself. Well, you know, I... When I'd... Uh, I'd listen to uh, the Sunday message, and I just had this feeling I couldn't wait till I got to work the next day to share it. Amen. <laughs> you know, I said, well, this, this is what I learned yesterday, you know. I yeah. learned this, you know. I didn't yeah. know that before. But, you know, there was just, you have this desire that, yeah. wow, this was good, I, I, you know. And I didn't know this, and boy, look, yeah. you know what I heard yesterday? This is really good stuff. You know? uh, some people, uh, Jonathan Edwards wrote about this, but some people haven't ever thought about it, that praise praise testifying sharing it's it's really the climax of worship and we all do it so even those friends of yours that are a little bit bothered or surprised or not as eager to hear you sharing yeah. all of your joy with them but they do the same thing with their joys yeah. they do mm -hmm. the same thing with their yeah. interests and their hobbies mm -hmm. That's just what humans do. It's, it's part of being a worshiping being. But, but God made you into a worshiper of Jesus. And so, yeah, you can't bottle that up. You, you, just, you just got this <laughs> desire to just share it yeah. with people. Okay, so let's, let's move forward. Were, were you then baptized? Uh, yes, the little church I, I was attending didn't have a baptismal. Okay. And so I was, wasn't able to get baptized right away. Of course, I, when I got saved, I didn't know anything about baptism. Okay. I, I just mm -hmm. knew that I, need, I needed Jesus, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and he saved me. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it was probably a month or so after I got saved, uh, on a Sunday night, uh, the pastor was uh, brought a lesson and message on baptism. And uh, I just got up and went to the front and said, I want to be baptized. Yeah, I said I want to let the world know that I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Amen. Hmm. And uh, believe it or not, in that little old country church, there was some shouting going on. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. So, where did they baptize you? Uh, at a Prairie Baptist Church, they, we borrowed their baptism. Okay. And yeah. uh, we set up a schedule, and there was a mm -hmm. couple other the teenagers mm -hmm. that got baptized the same day I did. Great. So which, your church used the facilities at Prairie Baptist. Mm -hmm. Yes. To do your baptisms yeah. man that's awesome yeah that is fantastic there's a lot of people perhaps if they're from this area and they listen to this podcast i mean everybody knows prairie baptist yeah. road yeah yeah uh, some people are aware that prairie baptist road runs right by prairie baptist church <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but uh i will i'm sure i've heard that before but it, it didn't quite register yeah. And that'll be very interesting next time I go by that church oh, or next time I'm oh, in that church. Every time I go to, by, I remember To that. think that my good friend Larry was baptized yeah. in mm -hmm. that baptistry. Man, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to try to land the plane. All right. Um, someone will just offer, offer some general questions to you. Um, kind of softball questions. Um, one would be, what what's the biggest difference that you feel Christ has made in your life? Mm. The biggest difference? That's well, a hard question yeah, to answer it, 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 there's it because there's so wow. many things you could say. Yeah, uh, th that that is hard to say. I mean, the biggest difference is is night and day that uh, my life. It's not about the world; it's about Him. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I can't. I can't even imagine, you know, not uh, being in fellowship with the Lord. I can't. I can't imagine uh, the life that I had before that I thought I was making myself happy with. Yeah. I mean, that's that is a hard one to answer. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you you currently serve as an elder here at Noblesville Baptist Church. Which, for those listening, that's just a fancy term for pastor. You're one of our shepherds here. Um, what message would you have if, if someone's listening and they find themselves 
identifying with your story. And here's what I mean. They're a pretty good person, you know, from the world's perspective. They work hard. They're honest. They try to treat people right. Um, they are good by, by all of those different criteria. And yet they find themselves in that same boat that no matter what they do, just feels like something's missing. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that person? Well, I, I would say that person, uh, what, what I've told him today is, is uh, you know, Christ is the answer. I mean, if there's any emptiness whatsoever, uh, I, I tell you right now that the world cannot fill that void. Yeah. No matter what uh, what you put in there, it might be good for a little bit, but it's not going to keep that happiness there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, joy. There's a difference between uh, being happy once in a while and having joy in your heart. Sure. And uh, with, with Christ, uh, you you get that joy that not only he he wants you to have, but that what you need and what you need. Yeah. And, and, and what you want. We didn't have time today, and I don't want to necessarily take us down this road, but like when you say that, Larry, that is very meaningful to me because I'm aware of some of the things that you've walked through. You know, walking with your wife, Margie, as she battled cancer, and then God took her home, and then going through those years of being a widower. You know, you had lived your whole life you know, you're either with your family as number four, or then you're married and you've always got Marge there taking such good care of you. Then to, to being all alone, like when, when you talk about the difference between moments of happiness and having a fountain of joy in you, you're able to testify because you've walked through some valleys. Oh, yeah. You've, you've been in some, what we would call dark moments, or we might call desert places. <laughs> You've been there, and yet you have a testimony that even when you were there, yes. God was with you, yes. and God's joy was still there. You may have also been experiencing sadness. Mm -hmm. You may have also been battling against discouragement and despair, but you had Christ with yeah. you. He never leaves you or forsakes you Yeah, in, in the deepest of moments. Can you sing that song that God gave you? The one that you start the day with, I think it'd be a great. I think <laughs> the, it'd be a great way the, to the, end the, it. The house slippers song. The house slippers. All right, folks. Here's how we're going to uh, end the podcast. I don't know if I can do that without my guitar. Oh come on! We're at least going to try. <laughs> we're going to try. Larry's got a song that <clears throat> God gave him, and God gave him this song. Tell me, when did God give you the song? Well, uh, when I was lonesome, hmm. I woke up one morning to an empty house. Yeah. Like I had every day for seven years. Wow. And I felt bad. I, thought, I said, you know, the curtains were closed. The house was kind of dark and mm -hmm. quiet. And, and the thought came across my mind, oh, my, another day. Yeah. And then it broke my heart. I mean, because mm -hmm. it was a day the Lord gave me. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for letting you think that you're not enough. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so I just picked up my, I was in standing in my house slippers. Okay. Picked up my guitar and I just started strumming and started singing. Walking through the house in my old house slippers, thinking about walking those streets of gold. Hmm. And uh, now I can't remember. <laughs> Got me on the spot here. Sure. But uh, this, uh, thinking about heaven, but, you know, this is not my home. You know, walk through the, but at any rate, it's, it's, uh, it's a song thinking about heaven hmm. and uh, looking out my window, looking across the crystal sea and re re referring to yeah. everything. I looked around the house. Uh, I thought about the promises that God gave me that one day that uh, I'd be with him forever. Amen. Uh, I just thought about all the promises that he gave me. You know, yeah. I, was, I was able to walk through there and sing that song. I, if I had my guitar, I could probably oh, sing it. Oh, I know you could, know, man. But Once, if, but, uh, if folks uh, haven't seen it, it's something <clears throat> to see. Brother Larry ministering with a guitar. It is wonderful. But it was a song just walking through the house, my old yeah. house slippers, just praising him. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know that uh, typically when you sing that song and uh, you share a little bit of the story behind it, it's uh, it's hard for there to be a dry eye. You know, it's just one of those, it's a beautiful song and it means so much that it's a song that God gave you uh, at the moment that he gave it to you. It's been a real encouragement Amen. to a lot of people. Hmm. Well, Brother AJ, I mean, I think that's a pretty good spot. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's it's encouraging to hear. I mean, so often we think of the the moral person who just seems unreachable because they are they're good, right? right. They feel good, but you never know what's going on underneath. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. Well, we we should know. Uh, Jeremiah says that the things that people turn to for satisfaction instead of God. Mm-hmm. They are broken cisterns. They yeah. can hold no water. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. And so for all of us who are listening, we need to preach that to ourselves. That that moral brother or sister, that moral coworker, that moral fill in the blank, and everything seems perfect in their life. You know, mm-hmm. you follow them on Facebook, and, and it doesn't seem like they have a care in this world. Mm-hmm. That's not true. What is true is that right now they're drinking from a cistern. Mm-hmm. Whether they realize it or not, it's broken. Mm-hmm. And they're going to come to realize it eventually. Yeah. And so we need to remind ourselves of that and be ready and willing, like Larry's friend Jimmy, to be there offering the water of life. Yeah. Yeah, well, praise God for that testimony. That was good. We'll go ahead and end it there. Thank you guys for... Tune in to episode number three of the NBC After Hours podcast, and uh, we will see you next time. God bless.